Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Momentum. This topic was suggested by Matt Jones, Alia Khan, Azim Iftikhar, Arta Begian, Holly Wilkinson, Shah Jenkins, Alex Nutt and Random Element. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic that you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Momentum is one of those topics in physics which it's difficult to teach clearly. That means an awful lot of people are put off by it. That also means that if you're able to do it well, then that puts you head and shoulders above all your competition. So it's really important that you get this right. And it's honestly not that difficult once you understand what's going on. In fact, it's so simple, I'll be able to cover it in this video in under five minutes. You do need to make sure that you understand how to use the formula sheet though. And if you click just here, you should be able to watch a video which explains all about how to do that. The formula we're going to be using to calculate momentum is P equals M times V, or momentum equals mass times velocity. If you're comfortable using formulas, then this shouldn't be at all intimidating. To work out the momentum of an object, you just multiply its mass by its velocity. And this is intrinsic to what momentum is. Momentum is a measure of how difficult it is to change an object's velocity. Normally we're talking about a moving object, which then we're trying to bring to a halt. Think about an object crashing into a wall. So the two things which are going to make it difficult to change that object's velocity are how fast it's going in the first place and how heavy it is, which is its velocity and its mass. This is where this equation comes from, so it's really not that surprising. And remember, at foundation tier, you don't need to be able to rearrange this equation. You just need to be able to stick mass and velocity into it to calculate momentum. So for example, if we had an object with a five kilogram mass and a velocity of three meters per second, its momentum would be five kilograms multiplied by three meters per second, giving us a momentum of 15, and the units are kilogram meters per second. This is a really easy set of units to remember because I'm sure that you can remember the units of mass at kilograms and I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to remember the units of velocity are meters per second. Well, the units of momentum are just those two units multiplied together or basically written next to each other. So easy units to remember and an easy calculation to do. You do need to know a little bit about what's going on as well. There's a key concept within momentum known as conservation. That means the total amount of momentum in any given system always remains the same. For example, the total momentum of two objects before they collide and after they collide is always the same. At higher tier, you need to be able to rearrange the equation in order to work with this concept. But at foundation tier, you just need to be aware of the concept and what it means. Essentially, if you've got two objects with equal momentum moving towards one another, so for example, a four kilogram mass moving at six meters per second and an eight kilogram mass moving in the opposite direction at three meters per second, which both have the same momentum, then when they collide, if they stick together, then those two momentums will cancel each other out and the total momentum will be zero. Or you might get something like, for example, a rocket and it fires uh, its fuel out of the back and as those exhaust gases are being fired out of the back, the momentum of them going one way forces the momentum of the rocket, which was stationary beforehand, to go in the opposite direction. All just conservation of momentum. If you're doing foundation tier edXL or AQA, that's all you need to know. If you're doing any of the other boards, there's one tiny extra bit of information which you need to know, and that is this equation. The force applied to an object to change its momentum equals that change in momentum divided by the time taken for its momentum to change. So let's imagine that we've got an object which experiences a change in momentum of 20 kilogram meters per second, and it takes five seconds for this to happen then the force is just 20 kilogram meters per second divided by five seconds, which is equal to four. That is four newtons because it's a force. This is an important idea because it shows that if we can increase this time, we reduce the force. So for example, in a car crash, if we can increase the amount of time which it takes a person to stop, then we reduce the force on that person. So things like crumple zones, airbags and seat belts all have a job of slowing a person down much more slowly than if they just collided straight with the dashboard or with the wall which they were crashing into. 
all of those cushioning devices help slow down that person over a greater amount of time. They increase the time here, and as a result, they reduce the force on that person's body, and they're much less likely to experience injuries as a result of those collisions. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.